This is Code.org, and let's talk parallel, parallel distribution and how we can speed up or make algorithms more efficient. This is super cool. If you're into video games or design or any type of, of large scale graphical thing, this is how it works. And what I mean, well, I'll show you. So start us off here. Uh, they do have a prompt, brainstorm a task that you can complete faster if you get other people to help. What's the most number of people you'd want to help and why? Now for this, obviously you're going to be writing about it, but what they're getting at here is give me any task that, well, people could help with. And you might think, well, almost anything. If I have a few people helping me out, it will go faster. I don't know, doing dishes, putting away the laundry. I'm going to think of all these chores, um, eating my uh, French fries, which a friend helped me out with. Well, not really helped. They stole them. But anyways, these, these go faster, but there's limit to the rate of return, right? So if I have a hundred people trying to get help cook dinner, it's gonna go a lot slower than if it's just me, because there's too many people, there's too many hands, half of them are sitting there bored, the other half need to, you know, let go of my stuff and let me just do it. So they want you to think about how more people can help, but always, forever, hmm. So let's see what they have planned out here. Parallel algorithms and speed up. So if you're not able to be in groups or be in person because the world, um, there are ways to kind of take a look at this on our own. And that's what I'm going to walk through. So challenge one, one person sort, shuffle the cards, put them in a neat stack face down as quickly as you can, get the cards sorted. So all red cards are at the bottom and all black cards are at the top. Time stops when you have all of them sorted. Well, here we go. One person sort, as quick as you can, sort the blocks into four piles according to the color. Time stops when all the blocks are sorted. Try it twice and record your best time. And they mean what they're saying here. So here I am. Boom. Here's my sort. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, did they give us two copies? They're brilliant. Okay. Let's go ahead then and I'm just going to go to type in timer on Google and it will give me, well, shockingly a timer. And, oh, nope, I want the stopwatch. All right, ready, set, uh, smaller, maybe a smaller, boop, and boop, and go. Okay. I might speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Maybe not, we'll find out. Orange, green, maybe I'll go super fast. Mm. I have ended up just looking for one color because somehow my brain's doing that better. Oh, I missed one, no. This should not be the largest thing I've done today. I should take this time to mention I'm red-green colorblind, but these colors are pretty distinct, so it's not going to hurt me. At least not that I know. Hey. I guess it's cheating to grab more than one at a time. Rah! By the way, if you beat me, don't comment below. I don't care. I'm the fastest ever. Just saying. I'm not competitive. Especially if you're my students. Boom! Ooh! 105! Boom. Okay. Uh, where am I supposed to put this? They'll probably have a page for it, but I'm going to put it here so I don't forget. 105. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, wait. That's one minute, five seconds. Okay. Let me do it again. Mark. Oh, 106. Whatever. Set. Go. 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 Why does this seem... Like it should be easier. And these repetitive tasks are things that computers do really well, right? Analyzing data, sorting out uh, mathematical equations, figuring out a location of something and how long it will take you to get there, uh, searching through the Googles for the random YouTube video that you really need to watch Mr. Kaiser sort blocks on his screen. Computers can sort a lot of data really quickly, and that's what video games, applications, uh, your camera is. It's intaking a lot of light data, a lot of pixelated data, a lot of geographical data, so on and so forth, and then rendering it on the screen in some way. But there's a lot of ones and zeros and numbers behind it. So sorting data is super important to computers. And if we can figure out faster methods of having them accomplish these things, we, well, we can do so much more with them to an incredible degree. Ugh. Am I getting faster? No! No! Oh, why did I record this? One minute and eleven seconds. Fine. 
So that's basically one minute eight is my average. No. Okay, that would be my average. All right, now what? As quickly as you can, sort the blocks into four piles according to their color. This time, you can assign half and sort an imaginary half with a other partner. So we're seeing if we divide and conquer how much time it will take. Cool, and they have this little demo, but I'm gonna just attack this one. Reset, go, go. I should have actually said I need to reset this. When they say don't just pick one color or something like that, divide the blocks in half. And I think that's partially why they give the example here. Because picking one color will actually change it. You're, you're not randomly assigning half of the work. You're specifically in that sense. So I'm going to try to pick half of them. And I think that's roughly half. That's the half I'll do. Okay, now. Dividing it up by color specifically, you know what's going on there. And that's a tactic. That's a strategy. They mean if computers or if you just divided work in half, what's your increase? It's not a fair test if you're thinking about it and dividing it by color because that's a divided workload but that's not actually what they're asking they're asking just if you had two bodies in the room doing the same thing what would be the increase no thinking when you're dividing until you're on an individual basis stop and i have that brief little whatchamacallit but there we go i'm at 43 seconds so you slap that down and we're going to just pretend like that's my average. I would do it another uh, another time and average them. That's what you should be doing. But notice I was at 43 seconds. So wait a minute, though. 43 seconds. Notice this is only half the work. I divided the blocks in half. Well, is 43 seconds half of what was my average here? 68 seconds. So let's do 43 over 68. And no, right? So 43 seconds is 63%. Well, wait a minute. I divided the work in half, and it's still taking me 63% of the time just to do that half. Interesting. Let's try what they're going to have us do next. See if that makes more sense. This time, you can assign three quarters of the sorting blocks to three imaginary partners. They will sort their portion in the same time it takes you to sort yours. So if you think about it, right, if I assigned half, to each me and my partner, and we each took 43 seconds, well, 43 seconds times two, that means it actually took us here 126 seconds, which was more than the 68 seconds it took me to do it on my own, if you add up each partner's time. All right, that being said, we're gonna talk about this in a second, but let me go ahead and pretend I'm dividing this in four. So I don't know, is that a fourth-ish? I'm going to say that's a fourth-ish, maybe. Mm. To be exact, you would want to count these, so. Yeah, and I'll throw a few more my way just in case. All right, go. And stop. 15 seconds. All right, so 15 seconds. Now, if there was four of us, how long would that take? Well, then that would be 63 seconds hmm interesting now let me try this half again though okay i want to do it one more time just to test out the time so i'm going to take this half and push it over here reset and go 26 seconds okay that makes more sense so that last time i got stuck on the sign thing i'm going to count this one 26 seconds so 26 seconds if there was two of us how long would that be well now i'm talking about just 54 seconds, right? And so if it's just 54 seconds, this time, remember, I got caught on the edge here. If it's just 54 seconds in total, well, interesting, that would mean because there'd be two of us. So I have to do my 26 seconds times two, and then I'd have to do this one times four, right? 15 seconds times four, well, that would equal actually 60 seconds because I only did a fourth of the work. So the weird part about that, though, is if you think about it, if there are four of us doing this, right, if there's four people, why is it still taking me 15 seconds? Why, when I add up all the time that we spent on this, it's 60 seconds total? Whereas, I'm going to get rid of that slide, whereas in this one, when I did it correctly, just with two of us, it took 54 seconds for all of our time. And that's where we get into parallel computer, sequential computing, and threading. 
which I don't think they go into threading. Threading's an artificial uh, processor. It's kind of a fake processor. Well, it's not fake, but it's it's a second item processing data for you. Sequential. Steps are performed in order one at a time. Yes. So if you're the only one doing something, you must perform them perform those tasks exactly in order, right? It's it's like an assembly line putting together a car. First, they put on this bolt, then that wheel, then the hubcap. Parallel. Some steps are performed at the same time, right? So say we take that same assembly line and the wheels, we have four people, uh, all put the wheels on at exactly the same time. That's their whole job. They just all turn around, they shove the wheel on, and the car goes down the line. That would be a sequent, that would be a parallel process. So maybe when they put the, uh, the hood on the car, right? That's, that's sequential. That's just one thing. You're not doing multiple stuff. But then they get to the wheels and four people put them on exact same time. Well, that's work happening in parallel. So prompt. What portion of your algorithm for challenges two and three were parallel? So, shuffle the cards this way. Too. So, what portion of your sorting technique, of your solving of this problem, happened together, happened in parallel? Well, I mean, the actual moving around of the parts. What makes things complicated or slows you down during parallel portions, right? So, that would be when you're actually moving these pieces from one side to the other is what's going to be happening continuously at the same time. Now we can imagine what things could complicate or slow this down. Well, if there was someone else here with a mouse and we were both trying to click on a block, we're going to eventually get in each other's way, right? I'll go for that block. They go for a block. I get confused. I see theirs over mine. Things like this will slow things down. It will make the process more sequential because if we both go for the same block, then briefly we wasted time because we're both doing an identical task. They grab that block. I have to readjust and go to something else. These are things that would happen at the same time that would slow us down. It is lost time. So not every tiny second. Also starting off, we both have to start from nothing. So when you say go, we're mouse is over here just hanging out doing nothing at first. And so now, instead of it taking me two seconds to get over here and really get going, well, there's two of us. So now there's two people who need those first two seconds that are just lost on us because we have to get started. As opposed to if it was just me, I would only lose those two seconds of mine, not the startup two seconds for both of us. So that would be stuff that's going to complicate this, that happens in parallel, that it, it doesn't really get a bonus from being parallel. Prompt. What was your group speed up? Oh, yep, here we go. Were you surprised? And this is what I was talking about. So for two people, right? Or the speed up of this parallel is 1.5. So for two people, one person I went to 60 seconds, then I went to 40 seconds. And so that would be total, and the parallel speed up was 1.5. So my total would have been, I went from 68 seconds to 54 seconds. So my speed up, and again, I'm combining both mine and my partners, that gives me a 126% improvement, or it's 126% the speed, 26% improvement. Now look at this. It's not just you. Speed up is never equal to the number of processors. So it's the same way with computing. In computers nowadays, you have four processors, you have eight processors, and like I said, there is threading. In graphics, there's going to be multiple processors as well at this point. They're more data-driven. And this is excellent for large data-driven tasks, it, but it's never going to be perfect. Just like if you had eight people help you sort blocks, that does not mean you're automatically going to do it eight times faster. Like I said, that means eight people take two seconds to start. We get in each other's way occasionally. It's not a perfect system where you get eight people's speed instantly that much faster. It's actually a diminishing return. And what I mean by that is maybe two people du almost doubles how much you speed up, and four people makes you speed up by about, instead of twice as much, 70% as much. And 19 people might actually slow you down a bit. Eventually, it doesn't help. And each added person helps less. Okay, as you watch this video, write down why is the type of computing presented to distributed? Why is the distributing used to be solved? I'm going to let you t check that out on your own. But I do want to take a look real quick. Sequential computing are programs that always run in order. Parallel, and you see this with mutex and different types of uh, programming 
methods in college, uh, parallel means you can pause and hold different parts and let other components continue to run and continue to process. So you can have work being accomplished or attacked by two different processors at the same time. Run on multiple different devices. This is common with servers. And speed up is how fast you can uh, get a time advantage, how much you're speeding up the actual activity. So with all that being said, this sounds complicated, but it's really important. You're going to see this in college if you're interested in this. If you're interested in video game design, oof, this is how you do really impressive detailed graphics and divide it up and spread it across uh, multiple processors. But really what you would be interested in is graphics cards. It's also why graphics cards were being used for crypto mining so heavily a few years ago. An algorithm was initially written sequentially. Later, it was determined that the parallel solution was possible, and so the algorithm was rewritten. The times to run each version of the algorithm are included below. Here's the sequential. Here's the parallel. What was the speed up? Well, I'm certainly not going to do this for you, but just keep in mind this slide here. Wait, how did they show us? They showed it somewhere. They give us all these tools, maybe. Right here. I would check this out. How are they figuring out what their speed up was? Okay. And they're giving us the parallel time. So keep in mind, sequentially, it took 30 minutes. But when we ran two computers at the same time, it just took 10. So what was our improvement? Think of that formula. It took 10 minutes. Think about it. All right. Up next. Parallel algorithms typically will be faster than sequential. And as you run the process one more computers, it will continue to grow faster. In your own words, explain why speed up a parallel algorithm will eventually be limited. Yeah, why is it eventually going to be limited? What parts of that are going to eventually not... If we had 100 billion computers or 100 billion people to a task, why does it eventually not actually help that much anymore? What's that bottleneck stuff we were talking about? Really think about those parts of it that do slow down no matter what. All right? Really interesting stuff. I hope you do awesome on this. Good luck.